everybody, this is Moni with Flowers by the Bunch. Today we're going to make an arrangement in a pitcher. So this is just a ceramic pitcher. Um, it actually, if you look really close, it's kind of got some um, fruit on it. It's been filled with water and a little bit of fresh flower food, and we are going to arrange our flowers. So we're going to start out with a little bit of eucalyptus as our base. This is a parfolia type eucalyptus. Eucalyptus comes in tons of varieties, but this is one of my favorite. I love the airiness of parfolia. Just a really pretty um, greenery. Now, the amazing part is this is one stem of greenery. So, it goes a long way. And you're able to be able to use this one stem in several different arrangements. Um, and it, it works out really nice. So it doesn't cost a terrible, a terrible lot. My words won't come. It doesn't cost a whole lot um, because you don't have to use all of one stem in an arrangement. So I'm going to take that greenery. I just pulled it off and I'm going to strip down that stem. And then I'm going to take my floral knife and cut that stem at an angle and just go ahead and put that right down in this container. Now, if you want to um, make this container a little bit easier to work with, you can tape a grid on the container by using a waterproof tape or how we're going to do it today is we're going to use some white hydrangeas as our grid. But first of all, again, I am going to just add a few stems of this eucalyptus. I took it and pulled it off that large stem and then I'm taking my floral knife and cutting that stem at an angle, giving it a good clean cut. All right, so there's our little base of Parfolia eucalyptus. Next, we're gonna come in with some pretty white hydrangeas. So I have already taken most of the foliage off of our hydrangeas. I am just going to fluff those up, take my floral knife, Cut that stem at an angle, and then I'm going to dip it in a little bit of quick dip. Now, quick dip is a hydrating solution that we like to use here at the shop. What it does is it just gives it a little boost um, to help it drink that water. So I just tucked that um, stem right there on the lip of the container. Take my second stem, dip it in quick dip. I usually like to count to about seven and then tuck it right into that fresh water. May have to cut those stems a little shorter. And then my third stem. Now I like to remove the foliage just so the water goes straight to the head versus to the greenery. Cut that stem at an angle, dip it, and tuck him right in. Okay, I'm gonna cut him just a little shorter So there's my three hydrangeas. So you see those hydrangeas kind of all the way around. Next, we're gonna come in with some beautiful white oriental lilies. So oriental lilies, there's two types of lilies that we often use, and it's oriental or Asiatic. Um, I prefer an oriental, it's just a prettier lily in my opinion. It does come in more pastel colors. It doesn't come in the bold colors, but I just like the shape. I love the smell. Now, often when a lily opens up, you're gonna see the stamens that are right down in the center of that lily. Be sure to go ahead and remove those stamens before they open up. If they open up, they are going to put yellow pollen on the inside of this lily and it's very likely going to get on you, your clothes, your hands, all the things. Go ahead and remove them and it's not going to stain the lily. Um, I'm going to take my floral knife, I'm going to cut that stem at an angle, and I'm going to nestle that lily right into those hydrangeas. And you can kind of see I'm kind of leaning toward one side. Here's my second lily. I'm going to do the same thing with it. The, the, the stamens have already been removed. I'm going to strip that foliage right off that stem, just like that. Cut that stem at an angle and nestle that pretty lily right down into that face. So the next flower that we're going to use is going to be these beautiful garden roses. So these are a peach garden rose. I'm not exactly sure the name of this variety, 
but they're beautiful open garden roses. And I'm just going to take these and nestle them to the opposite side of that lily. I just took that floral knife cut that stem at an angle. And you see I'm de um, tucking those roses pretty deep into this arrangement. Now often if you've watched me design very much, you know I like to wire flowers or wire roses. I am cutting these pretty short so I have not wired them. I'm removing any of the petals that don't look pretty. Just go ahead and remove any of those guard petals. They smell so pretty. Take that floral knife, cut that stem at an angle, and just tuck him pretty deep down into that arrangement. See how pretty he is? There's our beautiful peach colored roses just kind of nestled right down. Next I'm going to come in with an antique carnation. So carnations come in tons of varieties, tons of colors, all the, all the colors in the rainbow they come in and more. So this is what I would call an antique variety. It is in that peach color um, and so it, but it does have some really pretty green little on the petals. It's just a lovely um, color. I thought it would be perfect with these peach colored roses. So I'm going to take that stem I'm going to cut it at an angle and I am going to nestle it right down underneath these lilies. Now the wonderful part about a carnation is it's an extremely long lasting flower. Like it will last for, I mean, four to six weeks as long as it's well cared for, which to me is absolutely amazing about a single flower lasting that long. The carnation is also the birth flower for the month of January. So that's a fun little note. So what I'm doing with this carnation is I'm just taking it and I am just fluffing those petals a little bit. Just a really pretty, pretty flower. Cut that stem at an angle. And I'm nestling him right down in to the center of those lilies, kind of tucked right into the lilies. Next, we're gonna come in with this really pretty white Gerbera daisy. Now, these Gerberas have a dark center. Um, it's actually a little black center, um, but white Gerberas also come many different varieties, many different shapes and styles. Um, they also have a yellow center sometimes, but I love the little dark center because it kind of reminds me of winter, a little bit of a wintry look. Now often a Gerbera daisy is delivered to us with a, um, with a straw on its stem. Now that straw helps to keep that little head safe. It keeps his little head or his stem, his head from dipping. Gerbera daisies have a mind of their own and their heads are going to turn with the light. Um, and so that just helps to take care of that stem. These stems are also very brittle and so they break very easily. Another thing when they're delivered is they come in with a little net on their heads and it holds those petals up. Um, and so when they arrive, we always try to pull those little hair nets off um, so that those petals can, can loosen up and look more like a stem, I mean like a bloom, like they should. I'm going to take um, a little bit of floral wire and I am going to wire these two little Gerberas. And so, I like to use 21 gauge wire when I wire flowers. I'm going to cut this, this in half. I don't need a whole, a really long stem. Now, you can see on the back of this Gerbera is a little disc. And I'm just going to take that wire and press it right into that disc. Not too far. And then I'm going to take that wire and wrap it right around that stem. Now, that way, his little head is going to stand up and I am going to tuck him right over here in these pretty roses. I'm going to take the larger bloom and do the exact same. Press it right into that disc in the back and then wrap it right around that stem. 
Now, this causes you to be able to manipulate this head just a little bit, but you always want to be very, very careful because if you manipulate it too much, it's going to pop just really easily. I'm going to turn my arrangement toward me, and I'm going to figure out kind of where I want this little Gerbera. So my thoughts are I'm going to tuck him right down deep, right here. So I'm going to take my floral knife, and I'm going to cut that stem at an angle. And I'm going to nestle my little Gerbera right down amongst those roses. And then I'm going to take his matching stem and kind of come up a little taller with him. So I'm going to take that, cut that stem at an angle. And nestle him right in. So there's those two pretty Gerberas. Let's see. I move him over just a smidge so you can see him a little easier. Okay, there's those two pretty Gerberas in there. Next, we are going to give our arrangement a little bit of a line, and we're going to use Baby Blue Uke for that line flower. Um, because none of the flowers in this arrangement are a line flower, we're going to use this, uh, this greenery as more of a line. All of the flowers you see in this arrangement are more of a mass flower or a focal flower. We have lots of focals, right? Our mass would include that white hydrangea. Our focals are, of course, these beautiful lilies, the beautiful roses, um, the Gerbera daisies, of course, are focals. And then, to me, the carnations almost seem a little more of filler flower, but they are a standard size so it would also be done, used as a focal. I'm going to take a little bit of this eucalyptus. I'm going to strip the foliage off with my hand. Now some people, like my sister Robbie, are allergic to eucalyptus. So you need to always be careful when using eucalyptus because it can break your skin out if you're allergic. I'm going to take this stem and I'm going to tuck it over here to my right and you can kind of see how it gives us a little movement here. I'm going to take another stem, strip that foliage, and again, if you are allergic, you can certainly use like gloves, and that's going to help keep that um, sap from breaking you out. Cut that stem and tuck him right in. So you can see it's given us a little bit of a pretty line there. And then the next strip, or the next stem, I'm going to put over here to the opposite side. So I'm stripping that foliage. I'm gonna break that stem, and then I'm gonna take my floral knife and cut it. All right, to finish off this arrangement, I feel like we don't have any um, movement right down here at the bottom. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my Parfolia eucalyptus. I'm going to strip, I just popped the top out. I'm going to strip that foliage and then I'm going to tuck it right down underneath this, this hydrangea. Now if you feel like the hydrangea is a little too big for your arrangement, you can always take and pinch some of that bloom off. Now you see how that kind of took away a little bit of the bulkiness of the flower? Just go ahead and pinch that off and toss that away. Or you can certainly um, nestle that right down into a little saucer of water and enjoy that little bloom if you'd like. Um, but I just pinched that off and nestled it. Push that hydrangea down a little deeper. Now there is our finished bouquet. The rest of this eucalyptus will be um, placed in the cooler for another small arrangement. Um, again, that's the reason I love large stems of Parfolia because you can use it in your next arrangement. Now this arrangement includes the white hydrangeas, it includes the um, oriental lilies that have just a hint of blush, just a little kiss of blush. I have garden roses that are in the peach color, white Gerbera daisies, and peach colored 
um, carnation. It's kind of an antiqued peach colored carnation, which makes me so happy. Um, you will find that if you receive an arrangement that has the carnations um, and all the other flowers, you will be able to have the carnations and the foliage for so, so long after all of the other flowers are gone, which is kind of fun to have something. I always like to take apart my arrangement and as my flowers start to fade, I like to use the flowers that are still pretty and add them to a smaller container and enjoy them as they go. Um, the greenery we used was Parfolia eucalyptus and a little bit of baby blue eucalyptus. Guys, thank you for being here. If you have any questions about how we made this arrangement, or any questions about anything we do here at our shop, you can always ask. We're so happy to answer those questions. If you would do me a great big favor, give this video a thumbs up. And any video of ours that you like, please give us a thumbs up. That helps people to see us. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, be sure to hit that subscription button down below. If you hit that little bell, it's going to give you notifications for when we have a new video. Guys, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Thank you, sir. We'll get the silver like I said.